Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Welcome back. In this episode of Robin and Top Stocks, we're going to be taking another look at GameStop. And so I made a video on GameStop right before Thanksgiving, and I kind of got a little bit of flack for my stance on the company. And so I think it's really important that when new information comes out about a company, that you're kind of opening, uh, you're open to changing your opinion overall. And so I thought we'd go back and talk a little bit more about the fundamentals and kind of talk about the new information that just came out because uh, it's a pretty big news event. And so GameStop has been recovering a little bit in the past couple months. And so when I talked about it in 2019 at that point, I think it was down around 60%. And for a couple weeks after that, I kind of looked a little rough on my opinion. The stock had been steadily climbing, but when the news event came out today that sales for the holiday season were down 28%, the stock is down around 10% today. And so there was kind of a lot to take in on that. And so when I first read this article, I was like, oh man, this is the end of GameStop. Um, but the last piece that the CEO came out and talked about was that they blamed it on lower than expected hardware sales. And so in that last video that I made about GameStop, one of the first or one of the most common things that people kind of pointed out was the fact that the next generation consoles for Sony and Xbox are supposed to come out at the end of this year. So I thought I'd kind of go in and take a look and see, is that a possible recovery strategy for GameStop? Can they rely so much on the hardware for these next generation consoles to kind of revitalize their company? And so before we get started, I gotta say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and I'd highly recommend talking to a professional, someone that can find you the best place to put your money going forward. In addition, I really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button, as would help my channel out a lot. We're really close to a thousand subscribers and I thank you guys all for your support. And so with GameStop kind of coming out and almost blaming the slow hardware sales for their struggles for this holiday season, I think it's really interesting to look to see uh, how the company has fared in the past when other uh, important consoles have come out. And so with Xbox and Sony releasing their new consoles at the end of this year, I kind of went and looked back at the heyday of GameStop, which in my opinion was from around 2010 to maybe 2015. And so when I went back and look at those dates for kind of video game sales overall, one of the things that I see at the early 2000s or early 2010s that I don't see anymore is Nintendo actually. And so I, my stance currently on GameStop for the next gen is that it's not a lack of console sales, it's the fact that Nintendo brought this new wave of people playing video games in early 2010 and GameStop was in a great position to take advantage of that. And so when I put up the console sales from uh, 2008 to 2010, 50% uh, of those console sales were for Wii and uh, the Nintendo DS. And so when you have this influx of people that mainly had not been gaming in the past, and so with the Nintendo Wii being one of the most common video game consoles out there, it brought so many new people to gaming. And I think that since the Wii has kind of gone out of favor, and Nintendo's latest tries uh, with the Wii U, and the Nintendo Switch being so expensive, I think it's kind of pushed some of those people that were getting into video games away from it. And so I think that is the biggest hit on GameStop overall, and not the fact there hasn't been a next-gen console from Sony or Microsoft since 2013. I think it's the fact that uh, the Nintendo brought all these new people to gaming, and since then they've kind of fallen away from gaming. In addition to the console sales, just the whole video game space has been changed recently with uh, digital sales. And so it makes a lot of sense why digital sales have become so popular recently. Why would you go to a physical brick and mortar store when you can just go onto the Xbox store or the PlayStation store and buy the game for the same price, not have to leave your house and have it on your console immediately. And so when I put up the percentage of games that were digital sales compared to brick and mortar sales, you can see how fast this industry has changed. And so GameStop was in a great spot for sales when physical sales were the most popular. And now that it's gone out of favor, they've struggled a lot. And similar to many companies, I think that GameStop is just getting annihilated by Amazon overall. And so I kind of went on and I just wanted to look to see what the prices were for the most, what I think would be one of the more popular games, which is the most recent Call of Duty. And so when I went on to GameStop, it was pretty close to the $60 price when it came out. And when I went on to Amazon, it was significantly cheaper. Obviously, if you look on the picture that I just put up, it says it's not gonna be available until February. But that means that people saw this deal and took advantage of it very quickly. And so price-wise, I don't think GameStop can ever really compete with a giant like Amazon. And then finally, last thing I kind of want to talk about for just the video game industry overall is the emergence of just PC gaming overall. And so PC gaming has been around for a long time, and GameStop has never been able to be successful at selling physical PC games. And with Steam just dominating the 
PC games, like sales area, GameStop has never been able to take advantage of that. And so when I put up the chart of how many active PC gamers there are compared to a couple years ago, it makes sense that a lot of people are going away from console to PC. And kind of one of the newest trends that I thought I'd mention at the very end of this section is that free-to-play games have been very popular recently. And so one of the free-to-play games that I play, League of Legends, is a PC game and doesn't really affect GameStop. But two of the most popular games that have come out in the past couple years have been Fortnite and Apex Legends, which are free-to-play games that have microtransactions that go straight to the company that produced it. And so GameStop doesn't get to take advantage of any of those sales. And when you have two of the most popular games uh, that you physically cannot buy at a GameStop, there's just so many reasons why GameStop has struggled for so long. And so you have all these recent news events of... Uh, back in September of last year, they were closing between 150 and 200 stores. And now with this recent news about the holiday sales being d very disappointing, and with that, those news events coming out, I'm expecting to see a lot more stores to close down pretty soon. Someone in my last video commented on how many physical stores they have. I think it's around 5,500 currently, and that just seems way too many for what they're up against right now. And so it makes a lot of sense that they're going to have to liquidate some of their assets to increase their cash on hand. But going to the fundamentals, uh, they have too much too much stuff invested in physical stores and their debt has just been snowballing out of control. And so when the debt has just been increasing and their equity has been decreasing, your debt to equity ratio, as you would expect, is way higher than I'd like it to be. And so debt to equity is kind of one of those fundamental analysis that I like looking at to see how, how responsible the company's been with money. And so it seems that GameStop has kind of seen this trend happening too, too late into the process. And so it seems like they're very behind on restructuring. One of the companies that I've recently taken a position in, Macy's, is also kind of in a similar uh, problem with GameStop. However, uh, the industry of department stores has been hit really hard, but there are some bright spots in the industry. When you look at video gaming and just sales overall, uh, the overall sales are down and things are kind of not looking too hot. And so when I look at Macy's compared to GameStop, I can see some very positive things in there, including the dividend. And so GameStop used to have a very nice dividend. And at the beginning of last year, they actually cut the dividend completely. And basically what that means is the company no longer has the cash on hand to be able to pay out that dividend reliably. And so when they cut that dividend, it's a huge hit to the stock overall. And so when that news came out, I believe the stock fell 20% uh, immediately because it's just kind of the company coming out and saying, hey, we're struggling. We can't afford to be paying out this money anymore. And so with Macy's, there's a 9% dividend that they're still paying out. And so... I can see that as a positive going forward. GameStop, there's just so much volatility based off of these horrible news events and the slide that it's had in 2019. And so I don't really see a lot of positive things overall. In addition, their earnings per shares have just been dropping over the years. And so they used to be a pretty profitable company and that's no longer the case. And revenue since their heyday in the mid 2010s has been pretty steady and now it's started to decrease. And so when I look at fundamentals for a company, normally I can pick something out that's positive. GameStop, I do not see anything solid about this company going forward. So overall, my opinion of GameStop is, my guess is in 12 to 18 months, they're gonna be closing around half of their stores. And so I think they're gonna be going out of business eventually. I just don't think that they can survive with how the video game industry has been treating them overall and how just trends have been changing towards digital sales and no longer the brick and mortar stores. Obviously when a stock gets hit by bad news, and it pushes it down over 10%, there's definitely a chance that it can recover a little bit. However, I think if it bounces in the next couple days, I don't think that these price levels are gonna hold. I think it's gonna continue to fall as bad news continues to push the stock down. However, I'm very interested to see if I was right or wrong about these upcoming uh, consoles coming out at the end of this year. I'm assuming that with horrible holiday sales this year, next year's holiday sales are gonna be looking very nice. However, I don't think that's gonna continue into the future. I think it might just be one year of maybe increased sales overall as people actually go out, uh, try out the consoles and purchase them. However, with all the sales for games and the accessories coming online, I don't think the GameStop has any future. So let me know what you think about GameStop overall. Is it as doom and gloom as I make it out to be? Or do you think that they can recover, restructure their company and survive? So let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if there is a different company you'd like me to go over in a future episode or just a topic about investing overall, leave it in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this episode of Robinhood's Hop Socks, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.